Okay, let's see. Invite. These are my warm ups. <laughs> I was going to wait till she got on and then do lion face, lemon face, but way to blow that. <laughs> Ooh, I, I just, like I'm this. like, I'm trying to not fidget. That's fair. Noisily. <laughs> we know I'm going to fidget. A tiny Easter egg. There's all sorts of random shit around me right now, so. Where did this, um, when I sent you the email for the invite, where did it come from? Like, what address did it come from? Theo dot Theo Babe. I'm just curious, because it doesn't really give me a choice. We, it says, hey, we, do you want to do we, Gmail? And I go, yeah. It came from Gmail. Oh, will, okay. will, will you bring me a shot and a pretzel? <laughs> I think there's some tequila left. There's maybe just what's left of that Pendleton. That's not a full shot. Did you freeze? I think you froze. And Katie was no more. She was gone, gone forever. There you go. You yeah. were frozen for a minute. Okay. Uh, that's because my okay. internet crapped out on me. Okay. So I'm changing which network I'm using. Well, hi. Um, Okay. <laughs> Am I supposed to drink? I feel like I ought to be drinking because that's our, our stilo, but I don't usually make this face when I drink. <laughs> <laughs> One of the girls at work has decided she's gonna channel my badassery and not make faces when she takes shots. Yeah. Yeah. I remember in high school drinking and uh, news them and them thought that they were going to blow my mind by introducing me to Everclear. So they pour the shot and they hand me a glass of water and they go, here you go. And I took the shot and I looked at it and said, so what's the water for? <laughs> I mean, that's like in South Africa when everyone was drinking. What the hell were those called? Suitcases. Yeah. And that's so an intriguing name. It's a it's a Jameson that you chase with passion fruit cordial. And we're like, no, we're from America. We chase our whiskey with whiskey. <laughs> I hey, <laughs> hey everybody it's the booze and spirit podcast whoop, whoop. that's just like my a, new thing i guess yeah it's, it's, like it's her thing she says it. instead of it's a drink with death which is oh yeah it's a drink it's like a drink with death the tagline that she we wrote a, we have a tagline <laughs> that you wrote <laughs> i suggested it uh this is a very different experimental uh, potentially go way off the rails episode for us because we have a guest. Woo! Woo! Do we ever say it on the rails though? Like, let's let's be honest here. <laughs> Not one stayed on the rails. It's off the life. rails or doing a rail. Those are the only two options. <laughs> Was that an option? <laughs> Where's Sean? <laughs> um, you can make this happen in ten minutes. 
So for our special guest, we have uh, Amanda from Spooky. Hi, Amanda. Hello. Thank you for having me come on the show. Thank you for coming. We uh, were seriously worried that we would expose other, what would happen if we exposed other people to who we really are. Because yeah, I mean, she's she hasn't seen it fully yet, so there's still a chance for her to run for the hills. There is that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just suddenly, oh, she just lost lost her connection. I don't Break. know where she went. You're you're breaking up. Shh, I'm in a tunnel. I'm in a tunnel. <laughs> so, um, I mean, when Kate and I conceived this show, we never really had a concept for how we would use or incorporate guests into it because we're awful full of ourselves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like the honesty. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, our, it's our specialty. <laughs> um, so I guess we can just jump right into it. Um, so tell us, I guess, tell us a little about, about Spooky. Um, how, how did that whole scenario shake down? How did that start? So, um, so Spook Eats is a website where we visit haunted restaurants, bars, and hotels. Um, we try the food, we share a little bit of the history, and then we also share the ghost stories. Um, and I've always been interested in the quote unquote, like the strange and unusual, um, to be totally Lydia Dietz, um, like every <laughs> other <laughs> basic <laughs> gothic girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, I had my first paranormal encounter when I was about seven years old. And after that, it was really, it was the, it was the, the deal was dealt. It was done. Um, I was really, really interested from there on out. Um, so I would read up on ghosts and aliens and cryptids and all that fun stuff. Um, and um, then probably around like 2004, 2005, um, I went to Gettysburg for the first time. And that was when I went on my first ghost tour. I went on my first ghost hunt and then I was totally hooked. Um, so I was really, really interested in the paranormal. Um, really innocently, just really curious. I would, you know, take my tape recorder to totally date myself. <laughs> the tape recorder. Um, I wish I still had it. I'm sure it works so much better than some of the stuff I've got now. Um, <laughs> but, um, and like, you know, you would go to the cemeteries and the old abandoned buildings and, you know, just see if you could catch a ghost. Um, so it was very innocent. Um, but then in... 2015 my younger brother Jed um he passed away from a battle with pediatric cancer mm -hmm. and that was kind of like the aha moment for me where I went from being just curious about the paranormal to being very passionate about it and really deciding that I wanted to actually investigate and research and try to come to some sort of conclusions about what potentially could be considered an afterlife. Uh -huh. um, and that's why I turned to haunted hospitality because I started trying to investigate these really well-known haunted locations. And I found that um, they were either impossible to get into unless you were a really established paranormal team, or if you could get into it, it's a fortune. It's so exorbitant. <laughs> right. Um, and it's, I'm, I am neither famous nor am I wealthy by any means. Um, <laughs> so that's when I was like, you know, you have these haunted restaurants, you have these haunted bars and these hotels that they're already open. They want you to come and visit them. Um, and they have just as much history as some of the places you might see on TV. And so many ghost stories are surrounding them that and there's heat there's electricity there's food there's drinks there's <laughs> bathrooms hello um so it was kind of a no-brainer for me um and that's why I really wanted to start focusing on the haunted hospitality um not just for myself but to also kind of create a guide for other people um you know it's one of those truths about life is that you know you know everyone experiences death at one point or another in their lives they lose someone that they love whether it's a friend or a family member we don't get to go to each other's funerals exactly <laughs> um and you know and everyone has these questions i mean maybe not everyone you know some people are blessed with very deep-seated faiths and i was not one of those people i needed answers um and so for me after turning to alcohol first um <laughs> <laughs> after that it was kind of all right like let's try to figure this out and that's why i you know wanted to look at the paranormal and kind of create a roadmap for other people to visit these haunted locations to potentially come to their own conclusions as well 
Excellent. I know. <laughs> I don't know if she'll admit it, but you do have the dream gig that Kate always wanted before she. It's uh... true. <laughs> so I used to like always be like, oh, I just want to start like a, I want to write a haunted travel book or haunted travel blog or something. But then I get, I get I... a text every three months for years about <sighs> how do I get myself doing this? <laughs> yeah. Please note that I was working fifty-ish hours a week running a haunted restaurant for a good chunk of this time so like you know there was no there was no vacation there was no traveling (laughs) unless it was work related and then I was too much of a drunken stupor to investigate so you know this is just where we're at hey booze and spirits spirits and spirits come on like you can't go wrong still you still can't go wrong exactly (laughs) so now I got to take you to task because I went on the website and there are very few entries for the West Coast where Kate and I live. <laughs> I, you have more international London cases on your site than you do West Coast. <laughs> it's, it is so sad. Let me tell you, I have only been out to the West Coast one time in my entire life and I was 12. Mm-hmm. Um, so did not enjoy the, the restaurant scene, the bar scene, even like the haunted scene. Like I... The bars I, are not fun when you're 12, unless someone is like dumb enough to think you're 21. Y- yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, and I've been saying to my husband for the last time, I was like, we need to get back out west. Like, you know, the, I I was in um Portland, Oregon, uh, mm-hmm. when I was 12, and I was like, haven't been back since then. Like, we've gotten to like Colorado, and I'm like, oh, if we just like keep driving just a little bit further, <laughs> like we can yeah. we can like do like transcontinental. Isn't that cool? But we didn't, <laughs> we didn't do it. So, but hopefully, hopefully so- soon ish. Once you know, I'm allowed to leave my house again. You got a baby? Have, That's a uh... <laughs> yeah. I'm desperate to just leave the house and just like pack everyone up and be like, all right, we're heading west. Let's go. The old, How old the is old... your baby? He is going to be six months next week. Okay, mine just so. hit 11 months. So, like, I feel your quarantine baby. Hey, <laughs> yes. I'm like, how do I throw a birthday party during a pandemic? Because he's about right. to turn one. It's a whole other. Whole yep. other I'm like, game. what do you do with a baby in the winter during a pandemic? <laughs> Nothing. That's what. Paw My Patrol. baby loves grocery stores. Yeah, and we don't even do that. We get them delivered, and it's like, well, yeah. let's go on a walk around the block if it's not blizzarding. Yeah. <laughs> Sean takes him to Walmart when I'm at work, so he doesn't <laughs> cry. Put him in the front pack, let him flirt with old ladies. It's it's their go-to routine. So I was gonna say the old ladies appreciate it. I'm sure. Oh, they love it. So. <laughs> But we're in Oregon where people don't necessarily believe in science. So they like pull down their mask to talk oh, to the baby. And I'm like, yeah. I will cut you get yeah. away from my child. <laughs> six feet, six feet. <laughs> so do you mind me asking what your first paranormal experience was? Sure. So um, I was um, at my parents' house um, lying in my bedroom. I was in my bedroom. Um, and I. Um, what I ended up seeing was an old woman walking in our hallway. Um, my bedroom door was wide open, which since this happened, I always sleep with my door closed now because <laughs> I didn't, I was scarred, I guess. Um, but I saw this old woman and she was in a bathrobe with slippers and she had like crazy bed head. And I just remember that she's like, she was walking, she stopped and she turned to look at me. It felt like a really long time, but it was probably only a second or two um, before she continued walking forward into what is now our linen closet. And it only took about a millisecond for me to just scream absolute bloody murder for my mom. Um, and she actually ran through the old woman. She did not see her as like uh, she continued uh. to walk. It was the weirdest thing. And my mom was like, oh, you were just dreaming. You were just dreaming. And it's like, no, like I know what I saw. Like I'm wide awake. I was wide awake. And that was the only time I ever saw her. Um, I never feel like I grew up in a haunted house. Um, that was the only thing that ever was like really weird that happened um and it wasn't i mean at the time it was scary but in hindsight i was like oh she's just some random old lady fast forward 10 years later i find out that my parents were keeping from me um the previous owner of our house was an old woman she died in the house and her bedroom was my bedroom 
So luckily they told me this as I was going away to college. So I was like, all right, I'm gone. <laughs> like You can change that room. I'm not sleeping in there again. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it was the weirdest thing. I feel like it was the sort of thing where I just happened to be in the right place at the right time to see this happening. Um, you know, I would say like, oh, it was a residual sort of thing because she seemed to just be going through the motions of walking through the hallway, but she stopped and she looked at me so it's like this weird hybrid. Yeah, experience. residual intelligence hybrid. Yes. So it was weird. Um, and again, it was the only time I ever saw her, I ever felt her, or ever experienced her. So maybe she quote unquote moved on. Um, I don't know, but it was definitely, I always think back to like, that was like the origin story. Like, I wonder if that didn't happen. If I happened to be sleeping or I was laying on my other side and I didn't see her, would I even be here today? You know, yeah. would spook eats be a thing? So it's kind of cool to think back to that one exact pinpoint in time. Yeah, for sure. Nick and I grew up in a haunted house, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then became an adult. My mom, like, admitted, like, all of the stuff I was saying. She was just blatantly making up excuses for why it was happening. So I wouldn't freak out. Well, you guys are imagining things. Uh, and then, you know, you get a little older and. Even dad would say, oh, yeah, I see shadows out of the corner of my eye all the time. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, yeah. thanks for letting me think I was crazy. Let's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, thanks, guys. Thank you for having my back. <laughs> I, I remember being, like, three years old. We had this really long, like, Rambler-style house. And, like, the bedrooms were at one end, and the original garage had been converted and was at the other end. So sometimes that was, like, our TV room, and sometimes our TV room was, like, the living room in the center of the house. TV room was in the family room at the far end of the house. I had to pee. Someone was in the bathroom in the center of the house, so everybody was just like, go into the master bath. I stood in the hallway and peed my pants outside of the other bathroom. I was like, I'm not going there. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Down there where my bedroom was. <laughs> oh, yeah. with the uh and, with the window that didn't shut all the way because apparently somebody shot himself in my room and nobody decided to tell me till i was in my teenage year <laughs> oh wow <laughs> wow yeah we had a fun house <laughs> it's not the adjective i would use but <laughs> builds character after our, after our grandfather passed which um I creepily told everyone when it happened before anyone knew. Um, the activity went from aggressive to just nonchalant. So like it, the activity kept up, but it no longer was aggressive towards anyone in the house. So that was that's, good. That's good. So we like to think Grampy Ray was there kicking some, some bad <laughs> ghost ass. <laughs> so you've got a brand new project. Uh, now wait uh, no we're filming this in the future recording yeah. in the future well, she's gonna um, have this released right well yeah we're recording in the future but this, this is coming out a uh, month from today so it'll be march 19th so i thought it was gonna be out by then fingers crossed fingers crossed okay fingers crossed <laughs> okay i i get what you're putting <laughs> so, down sorry i overthought it leave me alone so the question is, <laughs> what what's the new project you're working on? Is the question that I that I that We're I made sure edit to, out that rambling chunk. Sorry. I made sure to ask that question in a specific way so I could not edit around it. So we're gonna expose <laughs> gonna all editing. the springs and wires. <laughs> it's my job here. <laughs> so yeah, um, my. <laughs> you can't believe we're just rolling with it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just keep going. Okay. No calling line. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, my newest project is um, a brand new all-female paranormal journal um, called The Feminine Macabre. Um, it was my attempt at a play on the feminine mystique. Um, so I, I just went with it. I'm uh, terrible at coming up with titles, but I'm kind of proud of that one. No, I like uh, it. I, thank I, you. I like it. Thank you. So basically, um, the reason why I wanted to start this project was about a year ago now, I was um, doing a show on Paranormal Buzz Radio, and we were talking about women in the paranormal, but historically. Um, so we were talking about Famous women, um, Lorraine Warren, obviously, is like the number one that everyone always knows. But we also talked about Eleanor Sidgwick and uh, Catherine Crow and, you know, some of these ladies that 
are lesser known. Um, but I realized as I was doing this interview that there was like zero, not, I don't want to say like zero knowledge. Y'all were stupid, but like nobody really knew these names of these women. And if they did, they only knew a little bit of the story. Um, and, and I bet, got- and you could even argue that the part of why Lorraine was so well known is because Ed was a publicity hound that you could make oh, that argument oh, too. A hundred percent. And I would even, I would even go one step further and say, that the only reason why she's really well known is because of the Conjuring movies. Yeah, like right, like well, she if was, you were, she was if you're paranormal, like obsessed yes. Yes. in the like 2000s or before, you knew who she was. But no, but like she wasn't mainstream. She did exactly. lots of guest spots on Paranormal State. That was kind exactly. of where we saw yeah. a lot of her. Yeah, um, and like you know, it just really got me thinking that like even in today you you know you ask someone to name your favorite female paranormal investigator they'll really only name maybe two or three people you know you Velma. have <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> there we go um <laughs> but you know you have katrina from portals to hell you have amy on kindred spirits um cindy um now on the holzer files um but really there's only a handful that people can come up with but for some reason if you ask people to name a male paranormal investigator there's there's tons you can just keep rattling them off i mean there's shows that are just guys Mm -hmm. um and you know even with women if you do see them in the mainstream media they're one of two things they're either the spiritual person whether it's the psychic or the witch or they are a leading lady but they're always coupled by a man Mm -hmm. um it's never just a group of women um So it really got me thinking and, you know, I host um, public ghost hunts and I attend events, you know, especially usually when there's not a pandemic happening. Um, But I've always (laughs) noticed that at least in my experience, women make up the majority of paranormal investigation. That's just what I've experienced when I host events, probably 60% at least of the people in attendance are women. And the men that are there are usually there against their will. Like they were dragged there (laughs) by a spouse or a sibling or a friend. Um, But again, this is just from my experience. So it really got me thinking. And, and, you know, and as I was kind of mulling it over for a few months, I really just decided that I wanted to start this journal to give a place for women to share their research and their theories and their opinions and experiences in the paranormal. Um, You know, you you, you look back all throughout paranormal history, women are either ignored, they're forgotten, they're kind of tainted in a negative light. Um, And considered frauds more often than not in the public stories. Yeah, exactly. Um, So that's when I was like, you know what, I want to give a voice to people who are blatantly ignored. They're overshadowed by the men in the field um, and just, you know, you know, make a place for these people to share their findings. Um, And um, volume one, um, I've just compiled it all together. And it's so interesting to see what people have come up with. It's just a full spectrum of spiritual to scientific. Um, We have women who are have been in the field for 20 or 30 years. Um, and that's, you know, as long as some of these other women have been alive, (laughs) um, (laughs) it's just, it's just this great spectrum. We have women from all over the world, women of all different ages and sexual orientations and ethnicities. It's really interesting to see that the paranormal is this really vast open thing, but so many times when you think of a ghost hunter or a paranormal investigator, you just think of like the buff dude in the tight black shirt stomping through abandoned buildings, shouting demon. And they'll, <laughs> and they'll remain yeah. anonymous. <laughs> um, you know, so um, I'm excited to share it with people. I'm excited for the audience, whether they're male or female, whether they believe in the paranormal or not, whether they approach it more scientifically or spiritually. Um, you know, I hope that people really enjoy it that they'll they'll read it they'll support um not just the book itself but also the women in it um so volume one by the time you're listening to this is hopefully available knock on wood (laughs) um and then we've already got volume two in the works as well um that'll be coming out in august or september depending on just life in general um but i'm hoping to make it a bi-annual publication Mm -hmm. um where twice a year it'll come out um and just kind of be that little safe haven for ladies in the paranormal to be able to share their findings and their research. And 
possibly for once in their lives actually be heard. Nick as a white man is con no, you're not confused by this. You get it, but <laughs> I just I just look like that all the time. That's my <laughs> general state of appearance. <laughs> why i like the uh I, i'm starting to come around on the mask just because if you cover up my face from from there down it kind of hides my uh for lack of a better term resting bitch face and so i i <laughs> look a lot more kind and gentle than most people i think, think it's resting leadership face if you're a man is that it is that yeah. it's, it's leadership face resting, you, can have a, you can have a bitch face if you want resting bde face is that <laughs> <laughs> My face is a resting bitch face. Yours is, I don't wake up to label it something. No, my, I'm 100%. People are always like, why are you so sad? And I was like, I'm not. This is just, just how I look, guys. This is just my face. It's just my face. <laughs> um, we're not good at questions. Like I said, we're very- I was just listening to the big truck go by your house. With, well, I know. That's my number one sound problem is that he literally lives on an international truck route. So, oh, know. that's fun. <laughs> yeah. So, that's like 70% of my editing is trying to get truck noises out of the back. The, truck is, the trucks are usually not this aggressive, but I guess we usually record at a more off time. But, yeah. you know, whatever. Aggressive mm. truck noises with your beat. This is the name of my corn cover band. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so um right now your plan is for uh the feminine macabre to just be digital is that correct no actually oh, it's okay it's not I, gonna... that's what i'd heard at one point no so Ooh. it's not going to be digital at all i'm nice. terrible i'm terrible at technology so <laughs> um so basically yeah this is going to be an actual printed book Yay. Um, yay! Um, so that's all I know how to do. I don't even know how to do Kindle. Um, I've gotten <laughs> negative reviews on Amazon because my Kindle files aren't good. So I've uh, since taken all of my Kindle files off because I'm like, you know what? I'm not getting, I'm not getting negative reviews because I don't know how to do this. <laughs> formatting can, is hard. Exactly. I can make a good book. Um, <laughs> so um, this is going to be an actual physical book. Um, and the a few reasons why I wanted to do that. First of all, I love how books smell. So that's number one. Yeah. Um, but um, for me, spoken by a true nerd, like, oh, yeah. just like the way books smell, hundred percent, and that, I mean, they look good on your shelf. There's mm -hmm. Kindle can just no, they, no, 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 thank you. Anyway, um, so uh, my number one reason why I really wanted to do this, aside from the smell, was that when I first started sending my personal works away to different anthologies and publications, the first time it one of my pieces actually got accepted and was published into a book format it was I don't want to be like melodramatic but it was really life-changing for me um you know to get that book and see my name on the cover and have it like on a shelf and be able to give it to someone it was really impactful uh, impactful that's a word yes yeah. um, and um, I was gonna go I was going for empowering but it came out wrong yeah um, but um, it just, it really reiterated to me that I could write and that people might potentially want to read what I have to write. And so that was kind of my starting point of wanting to actually write my own books. Um, so since then, I've come out with five different books um, and I absolutely love it. And for me, what I want to do with this is kind of be that starting point for someone else. You know, someone else that has, you know, always wanted to be published or, you know, be a writer and just hasn't, you know, found the courage to do it or had the opportunity. Um, I want this to be that opportunity for them and for them to realize, you know, I can do this too and maybe have them start writing books and publishing their own works and having their voices be heard. Um, so it was really important for me to make sure that this was an actual physical book that people could purchase they can hold in their hands they can sniff um and that they can you know, flip open and read um and you know take notes in the side margin and highlight it um because you know the, the works that these women are doing um so many of them were so insightful um whether it was their personal opinions about being a woman in the paranormal or sharing their research and their theories and kind of 
altering the way that I've considered and approached the paranormal. So I'm hoping that it's um, kind of not a textbook because that's very dry, um, but it teaches lessons while also really reaching out to people. Um, so that and I don't know how to do things digitally. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm an old lady. <laughs> so is your brain burnt now from having to read a hundred new theories in a short span <laughs> luckily um submissions were open for about a month and a half and i read them as they came in <laughs> thank god if i had waited until um submissions closed and i had to try to like power through a hundred submissions in the span of like three or four days i would have lost my mind um <laughs> luckily i kept up on it um so i already had things kind of whittled down to like you know yes no and maybe and then the last few days was just a tidal wave of <laughs> new pieces so i was like oh my gosh okay like gotta focus um so luckily it wasn't sitting there reading a hundred pieces in a few days but it was definitely coffee was my best friend and long nap times were very <laughs> very helpful <laughs> well and i'm sure that most of what you received was at least insightful but i'm sure there was at least one you were like what is happening what am i reading right now like luckily not that often That's and it, it, it was it was surprising honestly um because I was like oh gosh like we'll see what we get and there was only a handful where I was kind of like "Ooh, like you didn't proofread this I have no idea what you're trying to say right now um <laughs> That's the so, best part of American Idol is watching the people who can't sing. That's so that's true. <laughs> so so we'll, throw those away and change the names and you'll have another book later. There you go. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, it's like the director's cut. <laughs> no, but, you know, and I am hoping that, you know, the ladies that weren't accepted into volume one, I always say to people, like, it's okay to be disappointed, but don't be discouraged. Um, you know, so I encourage anyone who did submit that didn't get accepted this time around, you know, get a copy of volume one and see what did make the cut, you know, see what I decided was good, um, good enough to put in the book for volume one and kind of go from there, see what they did, see what they researched, see what they presented and kind of, you know, not necessarily copy what they did, but you kind of will have an idea and maybe find inspiration. Um, you know, and my biggest hope is that, you know, whether people were accepted into this volume or not, that they support the project and more specifically support the women that are included in it because, you know, success for this journal will determine how long it will continue. You know, my hope is to do it twice a year for, you know, question mark, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> into infinity. Um, but, you know, it could just end with two volumes. I hope not. Um, the response that I've gotten has been fantastic. Um, and most people have been very understanding, you know, if they didn't make the cut for volume one, um, you know, it's been, it's been pretty good because I was expecting like people to kind of <laughs> come at me with torches and pitchforks. <laughs> no, that hasn't happened yet. So, so that's good at least because I've been on the opposite end. You know, I've been yeah. the one submitting and getting rejected or accepted. Um, so I know, you know, it's the highest of highs and it's the lowest of lows. So like when I tell people, like, I understand how you feel. I do actually, I'm not just saying that and like, you know, being a pretentious jerk. I do understand <laughs> that it does stink. It stinks when you, you know, you do work on something for a while and, you know, it just doesn't, it's not the right fit at the right time. Um, so, so keep trying, don't be discouraged. That's what I say. Well, like, you know, Nick and I are pretty new to the game, but it seems like the paranormal community has, I'm sure there's exceptions to this rule, but like has been pretty accepting and supporting of each other. Like as far as our interactions, like, there seems to be quite a bit of camaraderie and if there's like beating each other down, it's at least off of social media and away from cameras and that sort of thing, which is nice. Yeah. yeah it's definitely like, like any community or subculture, you are going to have no, excuse me, I burped. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ooh, it wasn't us. <laughs> I've been quietly burping this entire time. Though. Me too. I, 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 I just... That's what I get for usually. Okay, let me tell you. Usually I drink water, but I was like, ooh, this is, you know, this is booze and spirits. I have to have a cocktail with me. So I'm drinking alcohol and I never drink alcohol. I felt the same pressure. Irish. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so I brought the peer pressure. I'm sorry. This is you what did. I do. You did. I've been so, an enabler. It's so my cost excuse, to bear. 
it's it's you did a good job so anyway <laughs> um I feel like in every community especially online communities you do have bullies you do have you know those rotten apples um and I think it's up to the individual to tiptoe around them and just avoid them um you know there's toxicity for sure um you know even with this journal i've seen like a few of the passive aggressive but not so passive because i know exactly <laughs> what they're talking about comments and posts um you know i hear horror stories from other people um of just you know really toxic environment and stuff and luckily for me i don't know if it's because i'm a solo investigator and i'm not a part of a team maybe that's why i am completely oblivious to it um but personally i have not experienced any of the negativity um that i hear about from other people um i've been very lucky in that sense um especially here in buffalo new york um there's a very close-knit um kind of like paranormal scene um everyone's very supportive of each other um and like i'm relatively new spook eats only started in 2018 um so i'm only at it for about three years now officially quote unquote um even though i've been investigating since about 2005 off and on <laughs> and very like immaturely for yeah. a while there um but yeah and i find like podcasts and you know, independent artists and authors. And like, you kind of have like this indie scene rising up where like you have like your mainstream paranormal reality shows with like the quote unquote celebrities. And then you have the more laid back, you know, I don't want to say like homegrown, you know, grassroots paranormal scene that's really starting to blossom and I absolutely love it like I'm so excited to be a part of it and to be here to kind of see this community really start to morph and evolve and kind of find its footing I feel like up until the last few years it's only been like what we see on tv and what is fed to us but now with social media and the internet we're able to connect so much easier now and so much um quickly quicker um <laughs> english is so hard tonight oh my god i'm never doing alcohol again on a podcast. <laughs> but um yeah so again like with like the toxicity and stuff you know i think you know you're gonna find it wherever you are but 99 percent of the time everything that i've experienced has been absolutely fantastic and people are so supportive of each other um and i'm here for it i love it and especially with this journal the amount of support that it's already gotten and it's not even out yet. Like people don't realize like it could be a load of crap. It's not, <laughs> <laughs> but jokes on you. Um, <laughs> but you know, I just appreciate it that people are really taking a chance on it and you know, they have high hopes for it. So now it's like all the pressure um, to really live up to those expectations. I saw um, Greg Newkirk kind of addressing something similar to that the other night. Um, I don't know how the conversation came about, but it was on Twitter or something. He was responding to people who feel jilted that the celebrity TV investigators are the ones always get cop spots at conventions. And I mean, yeah, that stinks. There's only so many of those cop spots. But like you said, with it, with podcasts and YouTube and social media, there's a lot more tier two and tier three positions that people can move into now. Yeah. And I'm hoping that like as time goes on that those like tier two and tier three should kind rotate. of like exactly like or not necessarily rotate but just kind of like intermingle like yeah. you know have a few of those the i mean the celebrity names people are going to go to conventions to that's meet. what people are paying money for yeah, exactly. exactly like it's a <laughs> but, business guys but the hope is that you know maybe like you know you introduce a few of those you know little guys quote unquote and then they get a wider following and then mm -hmm. you do it the next year and the another group gets a wider following so then it's kind of more of a variety um as opposed to just like the same people over and over and over again um yeah, you know, I, like I've, I've i've stopped going to things because it's like well i've already already met all these people <laughs> and like they're great and all but i i mean i'm only gonna pay so much money to see the same people over and over again especially Whereas, like, like their big stories probably are the same routine. they're always the same they're Thanks. always the same <laughs> um so you know and that's why you know like last year was really interesting with with covid you know there was a couple of like online paracons you know i got to be a part of a few of them and it was so much fun to connect with 
people that you would never find in a, a lineup of a Paracon before, but because it was online, people didn't have to pay for them. Um, you know, it was, you know, this great little community that kind of sprung up. I got connected with people that I never would have met necessarily because they wouldn't be headliners at a regular Paracon, but because mm -hmm. this was an online Paracon, you know, the, the net was just cast so much wider. Um, and right. I loved it. I learned so much. I made so many connections. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, over the years and stuff, hopefully things change a little bit just because, you know, yeah, you do get the same people over and over again. And I think eventually it's, it could potentially be bad for business just because after a while, yeah, you hear the same stories, you see the same people. Um, so to kind of expand that, you know, cast of characters for lack of a better term, I guess. Why in um, pro wrestling, you change your champion every once in a while. You exactly. Gotta keep, that, keep it new, <laughs> keep it fresh. Exactly. <laughs> I'm really proud of you for making it this far into the booze and spirits series before making a pro wrestling. Reference. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Um, <laughs> We don't make many of them. We, well, I think this is the first one on the show. So that's why yeah, I not, would... I'm sure it's not. It I don't know what last. it is. It's definitely... I've got wrestling-related ghost stories in my pocket for when that episode is ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> um, so on ghost stories, since we're on that subject, um, that is one of our main... Uh, things here we do on booze and spirits is tell a ghost story you have an interesting ghost story restaurant story theater story some kind of story you like to tell us oh gosh um oh ah. what's your um, big story you tell everybody so, <laughs> so my 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 good story um it's not scary it's heartwarming so it might be disappointing but um, so my number one experience that I ever had, um, was at the ghost light theater, um, which one of my books is the ghost of the ghost light theater. Um, so it's got a special place in my heart. I've been a member there since 2005, which is really gross to admit. Cause it makes me feel so old. Um, we, we did name drop your theater in an episode a couple of weeks ago, because <gasps> we were talking about women in red phenomena. Yeah. Phenomena. <laughs> do, 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 do. See, she's one of us. She gets it. I can't say phenomena and just leave it. Like it's phenomena. Yeah, that's it's just who I am as a person. I'm sorry. No judgment. <laughs> um. So oh, that's awesome. Um. But um. So at this theater, there's the lady in red. Um. But um, it's a really cool location because um, the building was built in 1889. Um. And there are some spirits that are haunting there that are from definitely the 1800s, 1880s, um, you know, the lady in red, she's dressed in Victorian era clothing. Um, so it's cool to see that spirits from over a hundred years ago are there, but then we also have a few spirits of cast and crew members that have passed away within the last five years or so. Um, and they're kind of like mingling together. It's really, really cool. Um, so my story, basically, uh, my brother, Jed, um, who passed away in 2015, he was a member at this theater as well. And um, probably 2017. So it wasn't right after he passed away, but it was a few years later. Um, we were doing a small little ghost hunt with just theater members. It was probably a dozen of us total. Um, and while I was there, it was the first time I was investigating a location that it was kind of like just popped into my head that, you know, I should see if Jed is around. Um, you know, I've always made it a point to not do that um, just because it's a slippery slope. You don't want to become absolutely obsessed with, you know, contacting past loved ones and you don't necessarily know that's who you're talking to. Yeah. Um, but for whatever reason, it was just, you know, kind of like put on my head and put on my heart to just be like, dude, are you okay? You know, where are you? Are you okay? And in my head, I was thinking, you know, I'm at this, I'm at this theater tonight. My parents are at this theater. Um, the owner of the theater, who was like a second father to him, he was there. His best friend was there. So like all of his favorite people were in the exact same building. So if he's going to be anywhere in the universe right now, why not here? Um, so I was just, I was down in the basement with two other women. Um, and I just had my, I had my phone going. It wasn't even a nice digital recorder. It was a phone. Um, and I was just like, dude, are you okay? And I got an EVP um, that um, sounds like 
um, when he was about 11 years old. So he passed away when he was 19, but the height of his theater career, um, he was about 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, And I got an EVP, obviously days later, I didn't realize it at the time, of his voice as a little boy saying, I'm fine. And that was the coolest thing to me. But that exact same night, uh, one of the women that was down in the basement with me, um, after, at the end of the night, she came up to me and she said, you know, I got a photo of Jed. And I thought, what on earth are you talking about? And she showed me this photo. And it is a carbon copy of a family photo that we have. It is the weirdest thing. It was on her phone. She snapped the picture down in the basement. um, And it looks like his first day of school photo from when he was about 10 or 11 years old. So he's got long brown hair. You can see his jawline. He's got a green t-shirt. You can see his backpack. It's the weirdest thing. And she got that photo in the exact same spot. I got the EVP. Um, So it's just really cool that it was the same night in the same location. And I always joke saying that if I had just gotten that photo, I would, that's enough. And if I had just gotten the EVP, that would have been enough. But to yeah. get both of them, I said, if I never capture anything again on any investigation, I'm fine. Like those two <laughs> things, that's all you need. Um, so that's like definitely like my favorite all around like experience I've had just because I have two pieces of evidence that I can share with other people um, that are directly connected to not only the building that I love so much, but also my brother. So. That's great. I got goosebumps. Yay! Yay! <laughs> that was real sweet. That was too sweet for our show. That was. Uh... I was gonna say I have a scary. <laughs> I have a scary story too. If you would like a scary one to balance it out, let's hear it. Okay. I feel like we're not super scary because we're such like jackasses. No. But the stories we tell are sometimes like they're spooky. Yes. <laughs> they're just so, balanced with us. Yes. So life, life is all about balance. So that was sweet. So my, my only scary encounter that I've ever had, I always say like, I've never felt like I couldn't return to a location because I was too afraid to go. Like there have been locations where I'm like, well, I'm never going back there. Cause like the living people that run it suck, <laughs> um, <laughs> not the spirits. Um, so, but I was at iron Island museum in Buffalo, New York, and, um, it's been on portals to hell. It's been on ghost hunters. Um, And like in the Buffalo area, it's very well known as like one of the most haunted places. And I, pre-COVID, my family and I, we owned an escape room. Um, Post-COVID, nobody wants to get locked in a room with no ventilation, touching (laughs) stuff that everyone else has touched. So we shut down. Um, (laughs) But before that, we owned the escape room. And um, Linda, the owner of Iron Island, she wanted to come up with a fundraising um, event to just, you know, kind of like help boost, um, money for, for the museum. So we decided to put in kind of a temporary little escape room at the museum. Um, so I was working on it for a few days and the very last day before it opened, I was, it was crunch time. I had to finish it. Um, so she had to leave, uh, with her mom. And I basically said to her, like, I have to stay, like, I, I will, you know, lock up or whatever when I'm done, but I have to finish this. Um, People are paying to come through tonight. And so she said, you know, I have to go. I'm going to lock you in so you're safe. Um, You know, are you sure you're okay to stay? And and she just kept saying that, like, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? And finally I was like, should I not be? Like, what? Like, I get the place is haunted, but like, should I not be okay to stay? Um, So finally she's like, no, I'm sure you'll be fine. (laughs) Like, this is not helping. So um, she locked me in. So I'm locked inside Iron Island Museum by myself. It's the middle of the day though. So it's fine, whatever. Um, And I'm in the room called the chapel and it's got a piano. It's got the gift shop and it's got this beautiful altar from a church that actually burned down. Um, But across from that, out in the hallway, there's this mirror, this round mirror. And if anyone knows me, they know that I hate mirrors. I Same girl. Oh my God. I hate them so so much my husband's like why don't we only have one mirror in our house i'm like because they're evil i hate them i don't know why (laughs) they're in the bathroom for getting ready and that is it that's they don't go in other places yes he's like well can't we have one in our bedroom and it's like no i don't want anything (laughs) to like look out and watch me sleep anyway i hate mirrors so i'm working in the chapel and i'm working on a couple of props and i see in the mirror I don't want to say a shadow figure because I feel like they're different from what I saw, but I saw a shadowy figure. 
um, from the waist up in the mirror, but it looked like it was dripping out of the mirror. Hmm. I was not. Cool That's go that. time. That's go time. It's and I like very like briskly like collected my stuff and like I'm not gonna say I ran because I'm a paranormal investigator and you don't run from anything. But I very very briskly walked. <laughs> Very we're going to go have a breather is what we're going yes. to do. <laughs> and I just like made my way to the kitchen, which is like the safe area. And I just kept working in there. And in hindsight, I'm like, dang it. Like, I wish I like snap a picture, try to document this. But I think because I was completely alone <laughs> and it was a mirror. And just like, I was just like on edge sitting by the mirror anyway. I just, I booked it out of there. I regret that. Um, but it was the weirdest thing. It was the freakiest thing. I have been back since many, many times. Um, so it didn't scare me away, but it definitely like, like I have goosebumps now thinking about it. It was just so unnerving and so eerie. And I couldn't explain it because I knew like, I'm not seeing the reflection of someone else, like in the hallway or something. I'm alone in this building locked in hmm. unless there's like someone living in the basement or something that we don't know about. It was, it, I didn't like it. So well, That's I'm a scary a, story. I'm a firm believer in you have reaction. Like if something spooky happens, there are two reactions. There is shit. I'm startled and that's scary. Or that is terrifying. Get me out of here. And that is terrifying. Get me out of here means it's something not safe to be around. That's just my personal experiences with life. So like <laughs> you not stopping to take a picture. Don't feel bad about that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So, Kate, I thought since uh, Amanda does collect haunted restaurants and bar stories, maybe you have yes. a story or two that you could talk about. After out working her. 50 well, hours a week. Yeah. Well, so, um, so I don't know. You've been to Portland, Oregon. I'm in Southern Oregon. There's a town called Jacksonville. Um, it's like literally Southern Oregon on the five well a little bit off of i5 and it is the entire town's a historical landmark and i ended up working at bigham knoll which is the original school property in town so it's no longer a school um but the building it's been it's been a year now since covid laid me off but uh, it was like uh 1890 to 1896, one of those that the current building was constructed. So there's been a lot that's happened there. Um, and where I live was very, and still kind of is the Wild West. So there was, you know, Chinese miners and railroad workers and all sorts of weird shootings and just everything in this area. Indian Wars, we've got it all. So there's a, just a lot of energy on that property. I'm trying to think of which story I want to tell. But um, I guess, so when I started there, I was bartending and I was typically the closing bartender. And so I was the last person to leave the property. It's a three-story schoolhouse with a bell tower on top. And then there's an annex building that was constructed in the 20s that has a like, three more classrooms and what used to be the gymnasium. And then there's a couple of other small buildings on the property. The original schoolhouse that was there has burnt down for down two or three times prior to them constructing it in brick in the late 1800s. It was like one of those schools where you, if you were gonna be a teacher there, you had to be chaste and single and you couldn't drink and you couldn't go to the bars and you know. It's terrible. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so we, we had a lot of activity there, I think, especially because we were running a bar in this school. <laughs> it's ironic. I love so, it. <laughs> yeah. So we were in the, the restaurants in the basement and then the other floors of the main building are office spaces and they were event spaces when, you know, events could happen. Back in the good old days when we could gather <laughs> groups. Remember when? Yeah. So remember yeah, so, fun. Wasn't that great? <laughs> but when I first started, uh, so I originally started there, I was actually hired by a third party to host their trivia night. 
And then they ended up hiring me to bartend. And so I was only there late night, last one in the building a lot. But after I had been there for a while, the I asked the owner one day, I was like, is this building haunted? And she just looked at me and she was like, yeah, but they didn't start acting up until you started here. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I'm like, okay, sorry. My bad. <laughs> um, but we had a lot of things. So I'll just give you a, maybe a general rundown of the spirits we think we have at that building. We have done some ghost investigations and uh, I used to do an annual, Hall- well, we didn't do it on Halloween, but we would do like the last week in uh, October, we'd do ghost hunts. I'd have an, a Victorian absence party in the bar, and then we would do like a ghost tour of the whole property in the dark. I'm really sad that we aren't doing that anymore. Um, so between all of this and just, you know, those of us coming in early and staying late, we've got kind of a grasp of what we think the ghosts are. The third floor might be haunted, but it was uh, completely occupied by accountants and they didn't ever tell us if anything was happening. So, you know, they were there eight to four. They didn't have any good stories. We would see lights turn on on that floor when no one was up there. But other than that, we don't really have anything. But uh, main floor of the schoolhouse, we believe was haunted by two school marms. So we're thinking like early 1900. There's actually a, in the property, they've gone to the historical society and like gotten all of these pictures from the property, blown them up. We do think that these two marms specifically are in one of the photos in the library that's in that building now. Um, I've had staff because we had, we were on the bottom floor and there was an elevator. The main entrance to the upstairs was outside, but there was an elevator and then there was a stairwell with a like glass door, like a wood door with glass in the middle. So you could see the stairwell if anybody was up there. Motion sensor lights, had multiple staff have the lights come on for no reason when they walked down the hallway going up the stairs. We've had, had a couple of people like see that picture and go like, that's the lady I saw on the stairwell. So cool. Uh, but we, they also, we think they did not really like what we were doing in the restaurant, obviously drinking and being very debaucherous, that very debaucherous things happen. <laughs> we're just, we won't get into details, but um, so there is a few times when people would hear like two women bickering on that floor when nobody was there. The lights on that floor would do whatever they wanted. One time we turned, actually more than one time, we turned off the lights on the breaker boxes like the power was off to that floor for the light and they we had some so it was a school up until the early 2000s there was a Christian high school that was in that space when they outgrew it they moved and then the current owners bought it there was some students that had been there that were watching a UFC fight on that floor on a, on a big screen and they had they were talking about a teacher of theirs that committed suicide while they were students, not on the property, but it was a, a teacher that passed. And that's when the breakers were off and the light flickered, flickered off, came back on, went back off. So that was, you know, a pretty big thing. Um, in the basement, we called the ghost James. We have, re- so the basement was uh, most recently like science classrooms, but we also know that the original boiler was down there and they it was a wood-fired furnace for radiant heat throughout the building kids that got det- a detention essentially would have to come in early in the morning to chop and stack firewood so um bad kids club was down there we <laughs> we think that they're uh, we called the ghost james we think it's a man in his early 20s that might have been a teacher that hangs out down there he really likes and really dislikes some people. We had a chemical company at one point in time that the guy delivering the chemicals was like, oh, this isn't good. Because he had been a janitor when it was last to school and he would go downstairs to clean and get shoved out the door and the door pulled shut behind him. Um, James was really fond of me and a couple of the other girls really hated one male bartender we had one time, really hated a girl bartender we had. We 
one day I was standing, this was when I'd moved to management, standing at the end of the bar with the owner, who's a dear friend of mine. And then one of the other girls was standing next to us. And our bartender that day is bending over in front of a shelf doing dishes. And it was a German restaurant. So we had big, heavy glass steins. One of those steins, the three of us watched fly off the shelf and into the back of her knee. Feels with you. Sorry, Sean's looking for the dog. Um, uh, we would have, I have really bad footage off of the security cameras of glasses exploding off the bar. We had pans fly off the shelves in the kitchen repeatedly. The, the glasses <laughs> are on our uh, criminally underused YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, we just would always have weird stuff. I had one day I was, when I was bartending, I was at the end of the bar talking to some servers at the end of the shift. We watched the door, the exit door fly open and shut three times in a row. There would routinely be nights that I couldn't get the alarm to set for whatever reason when I was leaving. And I would just like text my boss, hey, doors are locked, but the alarm didn't set. I don't know. Every time she'd come in in the morning before anybody else was there, like seven in the morning or earlier, which is very early for restaurant people, every TV in the restaurant, which there was four or five at this time, would be turned on full blast. So, you know, we just had, we had those sort of things happening. Um, we did go through with some local ghost investigators one time. They got an EVP in the restaurant. We asked James if he wanted to leave, if he was okay. And he, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said he was happy there. So, you know, we would do that. And then we actually had a regular that helped build the bar pass away activity really picked up after that. Um, one day his daughter came in to eat and somebody was telling her that like, we've been having stuff happen and we thought it was Brooks. And she goes, well, I've got him here with me. And she's got the ashes in her purse. Cause she just picked them up on her way home. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so you know, and like one time the lights went out over the bar. It, this was like in the middle of the afternoon. And I'm like, ah, Brooks, stop fucking with the lights. And somebody at the bar is going like, you really think that's a ghost? And then I believe it was just a bar stool just flipped over. Like, and I was like, yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> the other building definitely had activity. We had a ghost in the ballroom that we called Mary. Um, she's a girl that's we don't know a ton about, but she was probably like 15. She, you would just feel somebody like watching you from various places. I've had a couple of people see her, see shadows moving around when the lights are low. Um, one night we were in the ballroom late and I pulled back this curtain on the stage to go like adjust the stereo system. And I literally almost peed my pants because I almost walked into a full body apparition, which is not, I have been known to have some sensitivities and that is the first time I've ever had anything like that happen. Um, and like one night we had, I don't remember what event it was, but we had an event I think was upsetting her. I kept walking through the ballroom carrying, we were doing a plated dinner. So I had like a giant tray of plates. And I, every time I walked through, I would have my uh, apron come untied. Like my tied very tight. I do this every day. Bow in my apron came untied three times in a row when I walked through the ballroom. So like, we just always were having interesting things. We did think we had a, something much more evil in the basement of the ballroom, like underneath that building where we went every day to do all of the laundry for the restaurant. Um, we'd all have lights go off on us. Inanimate objects start shaking. My boss who was relatively a skeptic and has come to acceptance, but like not scared of things, sprinted out one time during the middle of the afternoon called me in a panic because everything started like shaking around her. Um, I have a friend who would come in and clean in the morning. She was one of our employees. 
she'd come in and clean in the morning she'd bring her toddler because you know it's a family restaurant she could she could bring the kid one day she, like her daughter had like a like a metal rod for like holding up a patio umbrella in her hand and she's standing facing this dark room shaking it going bad ghosts lay down so you know we had we had a lot of interesting things happen at that property. I've got more <laughs> stories than that, but that's like just kind of the summarize. Like shit was happening there. <laughs> the thing in the basement, though, like nobody wanted to deal with. Um, <laughs> our sous chef would like not go down there. Like we'd be like, "Hey, can you?" And he'd be like, "No, <laughs> you no." Know. So, you know, it was it was a good time. I was wrong. None of that is useful. I'm cutting it all. <laughs> uh, well, we'd probably better push through to this episode's recipe. Oh, I made a drink. That's weird, right? That I made a drink. Not on the show. No, no that's no. Okay. Have you heard the show? <laughs> Have you listened to our podcast? Is this we play this like where people can. Um, so when we talked to Amanda originally, she mentioned maybe doing a Cosmo since this is kind of a lady centric book, lady centric episode. And I thought, you know, we should have a spooky Cosmo. So I made a ghost Cosmo. It is a white shimmery Cosmo that we're going to call a case of the vapors. Case of the vapors. I got a case of the vapors. <laughs> because it's funny. <laughs> um, so we're going to use, oh crap, I don't have the recipe. Hold on, hold on. <sighs> I told you I'm never prepared. I just wing it, hope for the best. It's how I live my life. You had one job. Drink recipe, you had one job. <laughs> Drink I, recipe. I, I had no jobs, but you had one job. <laughs> okay, so this recipe, we're using two ounces of vodka, we used an ounce of control. I hope I'm saying that right. My French skills are no es bueno. How's it spelled? <laughs> what? How's it spelled? I know I've seen it before, but I don't know. C O I N T R E A U. Control? Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, it sounds, it sounds right. Yes, yeah. I'm Did you just turn it to Janet Jackson? What just happened? Uh, three ounces of white cranberry juice, juice of half a lime, and a spoonful of edible glitter. I use Drink Labs glitter, but there are some other brands out there. Um, if it's not sweet enough for you, because the white cranberry is a bit tarter than the cranberry cocktail you get in most bars. So you can either up your control or put a little simple syrup in it if it's not sweet enough. But it's shimmery and ghostly. How do you, is that, how are you preparing that? Are you shaking that or stirring it? I'm, sh or? I'm shaking it. Yeah. I'm shaking it, straining it into a glass. I figured just dropping a spoonful of glitter into a drink probably wasn't going to get the desired effect. So I wanted to. So clarify. you do a body shot and then you snort the glitter. <laughs> no. Seems legit. <laughs> yeah. And then the lime wedge is like in someone's mouth. Anyone, anyone handy. If you've, all you've got is a hobo, all you've got is a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda's like, I gotta go, guys. This is. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Snorting glitter was the line. <laughs> I think her hobo, hobo body shots was where, no. where I pushed <laughs> after myself. No, she, she was out before then. That okay. was. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> this is our normal reaction. So. Well, I guess we should probably wrap things up then. Um, our next episode will be about something. Well, we, we got two options. We got April Fools. Or we can do, because it's also close to WrestleMania, we can do Wrestling Ghosts. What do you want to do? I'd, I mean, rather, what, I'd rather do what, April Fools, but I don't know what you. Well, I'm gonna. What would Amanda like us to do? She's the guest. Oh, good call. Oh gosh. Um. Well, I'm not a wrestling person, so I would go with April Fools. That's but, fair. 
this is like the second or third time wrestling's been mentioned this episode so it's not usually mentioned during our episodes it is like <laughs> it is a separate nerddom <laughs> that we both participate in nick more than myself but like it's over here so april fools is fine so i'm gonna keep the details on what april fools means for the booze and spirits podcast we're gonna keep that a secret for now it's probably a secret when we do the episode it's, too let's be honest it's a surprise i'm really ho- i'm around. really hoping to get you on board with just some blatant fuckery but i don't know if that's gonna pan out so. <laughs> <laughs> just just fell all of the remaining audience in one fell swoop if i can do this right (laughs) i'm just going to read a scooby-doo script it's fine (laughs) are you gonna do all the voices no i'm not that talented (laughs) so it's just gonna be a cold static scooby-doo script it'll be like ben stein reading (laughs) scooby-doo all right zoinks (laughs) zoinks Sounds good. All right, uh, Amanda, where can people find you if they want to find Spooky or find you on social media or find any of your books? What do they do for that? So my website is spookyeats.com and my books are available at spookyeats.com slash shop. It's so hard to say. <laughs> um, and then um, I'm on social media. Um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter is all at Spookyeats. So nice See, and she, easy. Nice she's and nice. better than us. She got the same name on all of them. We <laughs> have a correct two of names. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for joining us. It was yeah. fun. Hopefully we didn't traumatize you. I enjoyed oh, your stories. Gosh, no, you can't. Hopefully we haven't me. lowered your um, professional image is what I'm working I don't have a now. professional image. You sure don't now. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I'm the crazy lady that stays at home, writes books, and every so often talks to dead people in the dark. So, got to do very, what you got to do. Very professional. <laughs> <laughs> Political campaigns have been started on less. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not wrong. No. <laughs> All right, so, so yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh yes, thanks for joining us. Um, we will have links to your stuff in our show notes we'll have links to all of our social media stuff in the show notes so we're going to talk about that it's just such a debacle when we talk about it i made a link tree so that all of our stuff is in one spot so link tree slash booze and spirits and then i don't have to remember 18 different usernames that i created and forgot about <laughs> and i guess that's it see the tra- no i'm not what am i forgetting uh drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws and regulations don't end up our next ghost that's right hey she got that part (laughs) i did it yay bye everyone bye (laughs) all right i'm out of cider